Thank you for tuning in. Our next presenter is William Trainer, President and CEO of Grande West Transportation. Mr. Trainer, you may begin. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Sorry I'm a little late here. Uh, not as uh, computer illiterate as what I should be, but uh, I hope everybody can hear me now. Um, so for those that don't know us, uh, Grande West, we are a bus manufacturer. We're located head offices up in Canada uh, here. Uh, let me just get the pushing the slides presentation. Next slide. Yeah, so we are uh, we manufacture uh, mid-sized multi-purpose vehicles for both public and commercial enterprises. Uh, we partner up with some world-class partners to produce. Uh, our award-winning um, vicinity buses. We currently produce the buses in uh, our new model, electric, CNG, gas, and clean diesel. We have a very uh, uh, simple capital structure. There's approximately 95 uh, million shares that were fully diluted. But the key point here is that the insider founder ownership is very high. We're at a 30% uh, ownership from the insiders and founders. And the other key thing here is that we're planning to uplist on the, on the NASDAQ uh, this year. So our core market is really in the heavy duty uh, uh, bus market segment. The heavy-duty transit bus market in North America is approximately 6,000 units sold per year. Um, we have done extremely well up here on the Canadian side, where we have about 90% market penetration in our mid-size uh, uh, bus market. Key highlights that I want to point out is, you know, when you look at us as a, as a corporation, we're not a startup. Uh, we've been around since 2008. Uh, we have a, a very strong relationships with transit authorities in Canada and in the U.S. Again, you know, we have a very strong market penetration in Canada. We have over 500 units operating in Canada alone. And we do have sales and reoccurring uh, revenue. And we currently have over $50 million. That's over 100 buses to deliver between Q1 and Q2 of this year. Another key highlight is we're opening up a new manufacturing facility in Washington State. Uh, the momentum is very good for us in the U.S., but to really get in and get the market penetration we want in the U.S., the U.S. market wants to see that you have uh, your own facility where we can put the buses together, and that's why we've chosen Washington State. Washington State is a 30-minute drive from our headquarters up here in Vancouver, and it will drastically reduce our costs by having the uh, shared uh, capability across the border. But, uh, you know, one of the most exciting things we have in our highlights here is that, you know, we, we've uh, entered into the electric bus market. Uh, anybody that follows our news releases will see that we have um, really come to the market with what we consider to be a, uh, an extremely competitive and superior product in the electric bus uh, market. Electric bus market is really gaining some traction. We see it going from about 2000 in 2020 to over 75,000 sales in 2040. And uh, we have a very strong management team that is ready for uh, this uh, new growth. So we have now, uh, I think this is where it gets a little bit exciting. So we've done well in the heavy duty market. But now we've entered into this light-duty market. The light-duty market in North America is approximately 22,000 in annual sales. Um, we've come into it uh, uh, to compete in a very competitive uh, uh, space. Um, if you look and you can see on the, on the uh, slide deck there, the cutaway bus is really a van-style product that's bought from a GM or a Ford chassis traditionally, and they build the body onto the back of it. We're, we're entering this market with a, uh, a purpose-built vicinity-style bus, so it looks like a standard bus. It's a true low floor. You can walk on, walk off it, and uh, it'll come out with the exact same powertrain as what that cutaway vehicle has. 
So uh, we've partnered up uh, with the Ford. We'll buy our Ford uh, OEM engine transmission and basically the powertrain to put it in there. Uh, and in doing so, we've brought this new vehicle to market um, that can compete uh, dollar for dollar in value for what, uh, what we're competing against with the cutaway. But, you know, the real, the real excitement, though, is uh, our new vicinity uh, bus. We call it the vicinity lightning. This is a 100% electric vehicle. We really took our time to enter this market space, uh, study it, analyze it, and see what the, uh, you know, what the, what the market was asking for in, a, in an electric vehicle. And we, uh, we partnered up with uh, BMW to supply us the battery packs. Um, which are which we consider to be superior uh, uh, for the market because they're they're actually a battery that's uh, that's cooled with freon, so they're a lot lighter. So the uh, uh, weight density, uh, power to weight uh, density is, is very good for the uh, the battery. And then we uh, we engaged a company in Germany called Hopper Powertrain to actually help us with the engineering to ensure that when we get this bus into the marketplace. Uh, it, uh, it operates and uh, performs uh, 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 to the best of its class. Uh, Hoffer is quite a, quite a fabulous, uh, famous company. Uh, they brought uh, electric vehicles to life uh, for a uh, production model for BMW, Porsche, Audi, uh, even uh, Lamborghini. Uh, and now, of course, they're, they're bringing our uh, bus to life for us as well. So, you know, key for us to really get our sales numbers up to what we want is we really got to concentrate more on the U.S. As, as I stated, we've done well in, on the Canadian side. And in, on the U.S. side, we really need to expand our dealer network. Uh, so expanding that dealer network uh, means that we need to have, uh, you know, brick and mortar or a, a solid uh, a dealer in pretty much every category that we have here or every state. Um, in the market, uh, you know, in order to – be real successful, everything's got to line up. Uh, you know, like I like to say, the stars have to line up perfectly um, uh, for you to be extremely successful. And what's happened in, in the, uh, particularly in that light duty uh, market segment, is it's been consolidated over the last five years to a company now that actually controls over 90% of it. And what that does, uh, what that's done is it's put a vacuum in the, uh, in the industry for a lot of these dealers that want to get product and sell it. Um, don't have it because the, uh, the consolidation has taken place with a company called uh, Forest River, and uh, their marketing is to go more um, uh, less dealers and larger dealers. Uh, so there's a lot of dealers in the U.S. that are looking for product to sell, and that's, that's where we come in and uh, open that vacuum up. So uh, this slide here really talks about, you know, our production. So we have a ca uh, capability to go up to about 1,000 units uh, per year out of our Washington State facility. Uh, we also have the capability through our contract manufacturing to add about another 2,000 units per year. Uh, the supply chain is key to producing these vehicles. And for uh, vehicles that we're selling in the U.S., they need to have 70% U.S. source parts. So we have a very strong supply chain in place. And then actually to control it all, you need to have a, a good system in place. This year we just, uh, we just uh, uh, implemented and put in place this uh, Siemens um, new operating system, management operating system, which gives us the control of what we want uh, in the marketplace uh, to control our intellectual property um, and uh, create the buses much like this uh, new uh, electric vehicle. This slide talks about the Buy America and Altoona testing. So to, be, to qualify for what we consider to be 50% of the sales in the U.S., uh, which are your public entity sales, the customers, the transit authorities need to apply to the Federal Transportation Administration, and they can get up to 80% funding on their uh, product buys. In order to get that, you need to have a few things. You've got to assemble the bus in the U.S. to meet that Buy America. 
which we have, and we have already delivered by America compliant buses. The other is you need, you need to have an Altoona test. The buses that we've currently built have been tested and we've actually tested those to be best in class. So company history, you know, we've been around since 2008. Um, we got our first buses really out uh, to BC Transit. We formed a strategic alliance with them and, and built our first buses and delivered them in 2013. And then we concentrated on getting our Canadian sales up. You know, our Buy America really compliance really didn't come in until late 2019. And now we're starting to see quite a bit of momentum uh, we just recently had a very large order that we're delivering right now from a, from one of the uh, large U.S. airlines. So management, um, we are we're really poised very well to uh, take on this uh, new growth that we have. Um, you know, I'm founder and CEO. I've been I've been with the company for a considerable amount of time. I did leave for a bit, but come back. Uh, we have a strong uh, global uh, CFO, um, and recently, in the last few years, uh, we added um, we added a, a chief operating officer that really gives us the depth that we need for the uh, management team. Uh, Jonathan uh, Leskowicz, uh, he comes from uh, from uh, Coast Mountain Bus, uh, part of the uh, tr uh, Translink division up here in Vancouver, and he. Uh, he uh, uh, operates uh, as our chief operating officer. He's just doing a, just a tremendous job. So that runs through the deck. Uh, I'll open it up for any questions that anybody may have. Hello? Will, will you talk about the uh, the deliveries and the orders that you have in uh, progress right now? Yes. So uh, we currently have, from now uh, to uh, probably into Q2, we have over $100 million in orders. Uh, uh, pardon me, $50 million in orders, which is 100, uh, 100 buses that we're currently delivering. Um, uh, and like I said, those should be delivered uh, by Q1 or early uh, Q2. That is a Canadian or U.S. order? Uh, that's a uh, combination of both, uh, Carl. Okay. So I, I don't see much questions coming in there. So the key highlights that I really want to see people take away with uh, uh, is that uh, one, you know, we are a uh, uh, we are a uh, you know a real company with with real orders. Um, we we have uh, over 50 million to deliver here in the next uh, next couple of quarters, um, and uh, you know this electric bus is just it's. It's an incredible uh, vehicle that we built that we're uh, we're entering the uh, the electric uh, uh, marketplace with, and also uh, if I can state again, you know we are we did engage a company a digital offering to assist us in uh, uplisting onto the uh, Nasdaq, and we should be uplisted onto the Nasdaq uh, within the next uh, couple of quarters, uh, definitely four to six months, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll try to get up our uplist date. Okay. Carl, do you see any other questions there? No, I don't see any questions here. Huh. Okay, hold on here. Did, did, did you have to press something to open the questions? 
Yeah, I do see it now. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, yeah, one of the questions there, uh, what should the investors look for in 2021? Well, definitely, as I stated, you know, we we have, uh, uh, you know, a strong uplifting, uh, uplisting coming. Uh, we have orders in place and really, you know, getting the Getting our dealer network in place for the U.S. is, is key. Um, you know, we're, we're, very, we're expanding on our, our dealer network to ensure that we can capture a lot of that business. You know, we're focused particularly, you know, in the, uh, uh, in the California area. The California area has been very strong for, for electric sales. So over the next uh, month or so, you should see some announcements coming out on, uh, on our strengthening our, uh, our dealer network. The Washington State plant, I see a question here as well. So uh, Washington State plant is in the process right now. Um, we will see that plant completed by Q3 of this year. Um, I hope that answers the questions you, that you're looking for. You know, the why for the Washington State plant. Part of the moving into the U.S. and getting our numbers uh, up in the U.S. is is a lot of the customers want to be able to see the facility and come up and take a look at and take delivery of the vehicle in the United States. Um, and we do need to meet that uh, stringent uh, Buy America assembly uh, regulations. Uh, Washington should save us a lot of money by moving down to the Washington facility because it is so close to our Canadian headquarters here. Uh, can you give more detailed timing on the revenues in Q1 and Q2? We are in deliveries right now. We're currently uh, we're currently delivering about 10 buses a week, um, <clears throat> so they they should uh, they are in the delivery schedules and, and leaving our off uh, leaving our facility here in Canada. The, uh, maybe the other, you, I think you uh, you um, uh, the deliveries the revenues are are. are um, are put down when you do deliveries, correct? Yeah, for us, the timing on the revenue, we have to get a delivery acceptance from the customer before we can book a revenue. Um, so, you know, we are delivering buses as we speak, so that revenue will be uh, uh, be recorded. Um, definitely a lot of it's going to be recorded in Q1 here. Uh, what was one of the other questions here? Who is your competition? Well, you know, there's always competition out there. Um, for us, you know, we try to set ourselves aside from what some of the other customers are, or one of, some of the other uh, competitive competition is doing. You know, much like our electric bus, we don't see another electric bus in the market space for the sizing that we have in our in our size range that'll really perform like ours. Uh, so we always try to, uh, you know, engineer and, and be ahead of uh, what the industry is looking for. Maybe uh, uh, also add that uh, Green Power Motors have a market cap of $800 million compared to $150 million for bus, and last year they recorded revenues of about $12 million. Yeah, that's, that's a very good key point. So, you know, moving over to the NASDAQ, we should get a, a – very stronger evaluation than what we have right now. Uh, Green Power, uh, when you look at the, look at their company, um, when they moved over to the NASDAQ, they have an $800 million market cap right now uh, with $12 million in revenue. So, you know, there's, if, if anybody wants to use that as comparable, uh, I think we're in a, a much stronger, uh, uh, better position how many orders are there for electric buses? Well, we currently have put out a news release without even getting the first buses here. The first buses are in production as we speak. Uh, they'll be coming out of Germany. Uh, that's where we partnered up with, uh, uh, with our fellows there, uh, Hoffer, to uh, actually produce that first bus in the electric uh, propulsion system. Uh, those buses are actually scheduled to come out of there in March. So we're hoping to get them here in uh, April or at the latest, uh, early May. Um, and just based on the, uh, the spec sheet, we have been, we started to book, uh, uh, book uh, sales. We had uh, five sales booked for one of the universities down in the U.S. already. And we have, uh, on the Canadian side here, we have an awful lot of interest uh, 
you know, uh, particularly uh, Ontario, one of the large transit authorities in Ontario is really looking uh, strongly at our, at our vehicle, as well as uh, the ones on the west here. Uh, one of the other questions here, the timing of the $50 million in revenue keeps slipping. Why? Well, you know, COVID has caused a lot of delays with everybody, and, you know, that's what the delay has been in us getting uh, some of these orders out uh, um, late this year. And some of the delay of getting those buses out is really trying to get the buses in and get them completed uh, um, and delivered out to the customer. We can't book revenue until they're actually delivered. Uh, you know, the $50 million in revenue, um, most of those buses are sitting in our yard as we speak, uh, and we're trying to get them out as quickly as we can, and it was uh, basically a, a COVID uh, delay. Okay, uh, can you speak about when the... Uh, when you will market the EV buses? Well, I think I spoke on that. The, the EV buses are marketed already, and the sales are already starting to come in on them. Uh, what is your free cash flow, um, cash runway? Well, you know, we see in Q1 here, at the end of Q1, when we got the bulk of these uh, buses delivered, you know, we should be in the strongest position the company's ever been in. Um, you know, I think we're projected to have uh, uh, zero debt, and um, a cash balance that's uh, pretty substantial, somewhere in the neighborhood of $10 million or more. I understand you have five months of cash runway. No, that is not correct. Uh, we are in, uh, as I just stated, we're in a very, very strong uh, financial position. Yeah, I don't and see any that's coming in. Carl, do you have any uh, that's showing no, up? Any? No, and that will take you to your next meeting starting at 1. Yeah, starting uh, in a minute. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you all for joining in and uh, listening to the uh, presentation. We appreciate it very much. Do not you hesitate. If you have any questions, you have our email. Our, do not hesitate to contact any one of us. Good. Thank you. Thank you. That will conclude the webcast. You may disconnect. Yeah.